Now, you could sit there as a wrestling company and say, as you're getting back in front of fans and you're going back on the road again, you know, you're doing a big show, you, you want to please the fans and you want to give them a really good effort. Let them know that, hey, we missed you. We appreciate you. We're glad we got you back because wrestling in front of live people is so much better than empty arenas or stupid LED screens. Now, you would think you'd go out of your way to do that. Or you take the WWE approach. And you say you're going to give this 4 out of 10 or 5 out of 10 type of show that both gives you these big spectacular things that you really remember with a whole bunch of dumb train wreck worthy shit sprinkled in. If you agree with that assessment of SummerSlam, you should follow the show on Twitter and smash that subscribe button. Holy Christ. Now, there was a lot of train wreck to this show. A lot of it. They put Broke Baron Corbin, arguably one of their top two or three most interesting, engaging, entertaining acts in the entire company on the fucking pre-show against the Money in the Bank winner, Big E. Let me repeat that. Broke Baron Corbin, bum-ass Baron versus Big E. Two guys on SmackDown that you're investing time and effort and energy and resources in, including the one guy's actually got the frickin' Money in the Bank briefcase, and you put them on the pre-show. Just so that way, that abortion of a whatever the hell that Alexa Bliss versus Eva Marie match was could be on the goddamn main card. Who thinks of this? God, that was terrible. You have the, <laughs> these guest celebrities doing interviews backstage and you wonder, did anybody prepare him ahead of time? Like Mario Lopez still think he's a fucking vampire because that dude literally never ages. He pretty much looks the same as he did in the late 80s and early 90s on Save by the Freaking Doll. But there he is rocking a Heart Foundation shirt talking about the WWF. Yeah, that ain't a flash from the past. And then Tiffany Haddish, to her credit, made me laugh with her doing something for the first time probably in my lifetime by talking about the heartbreak priest himself, Damien Priest, the hell was that ring get up tonight, was the new national champion. <laughs> and some people are going to say, well, wouldn't you want to prepare him instead? No. That was fantastic. <laughs> she said Damien Priest was the national champion. <laughs> and all the while, the poor fans there at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. Apparently the Raiders didn't pay the bills. Matt, a big feature that. I'm kidding. I, who knows? But the payment systems went down at the concession stand so people couldn't buy food and drink. So you got all these people in this freaking stadium trying to get refreshments and they get held up for a while. Nobody can get anything. Summer slab. Look, I love the fact that this show was on a Saturday night instead of a Sunday night. But that didn't mean it needed to go as long as it fucking didn't. There were certainly several things you could point to and say you didn't need on this damn card. Rick Boogs and Shinsuke jamming out with Pat McAfee. That can stick on a Raw or SmackDown. That's fine. We didn't need it eating up several minutes right before the SmackDown women's title match. Which, my God, we wish never would have fucking happened. You just didn't need this shit on this show. You falsely advertised Sasha Banks appearing at SummerSlam, kept pretending up to the very nth moment that it was going to be Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair for the SmackDown Women's Championship, even though you've known for days, a freaking week plus, that Sasha Banks wasn't going to be there for whatever reason that may be. You falsely advertise this shit. And then as a result, you got Carmella coming out, 
to where people are like, are you really fucking serious? Like you would actually set it up for the save of the inevitable that everybody was anticipating coming. And here's the man, Becky Lynch. She's back. And instead of talking about how great of a moment this could have been, how awesome of a moment this could have been, instead of talking about the fans having something to look forward to on SmackDown, instead of having them sit there and say, man, what's going to happen with Becky Lynch coming into the fold? How's this going to go down with her and Bianca? You took all these other options you could have done. Have Bianca squash Carmella and then Becky Lynch appears and you don't do a match. Or you don't even bother with the Carmella shit and you just have Becky Lynch come out and fuck the match. You have Zelina Vega and Carmella come out and attack Bianca. And then Becky Lynch runs in and makes the big heroic save. So many things you could have done. But instead, you got all the fans talking about all of that you threw into Bianca Belair just to fucking end it in less than 30 seconds, some four horsewoman bullshit. And now Becky Lynch is a SmackDown Women's Champion. What a ripoff. All that Jinder Mahal and Drew McIntyre story you had going on for weeks and build up just to have Drew in in under two minutes. Why you got to hinder Jinder like that? Damn. And that Raw Women's Triple Threat match was the match that never ends. It just kept going on and 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 on. It's like, ta-ta today, Junior. But all this was, was as so often typically the case with WWE, one gigantic waste of fucking time. So let's recap here. You have Nikki Ash start this new superhero or almost superhero gimmick to immediately throw money in the bank on her, which is fucking dumb, to then immediately blow your wad on Raw that week by having her cash in on Charlotte and become the new Raw Women's Champion. Just to sit there and get to a fucking triple threat on this show. So that way, instead of even going with the Rhea Ripley having a chance and believing in her a little bit. It's just all of this circuitous bullshit. Just for another title reign for LOL Charlotte wins. She up to now 12 of them? Basically, you have nothing more in terms of mileage you can get out of that women's money in the bank match. You blew your entire fucking story cycle wad here in one month just to ride back at the same fucking point you were at before just so that way this plastic surgery forced bitch could have yet another title reign. What is it? Like, what's the deal here? Is it, a, is it the story is like it's a wonderful flair and every time Charlotte gets another fucking women's championship reign that she won't do shit with, that she doesn't deserve with her botchy ass, does another plastic surgeon get their fucking license? What the hell is this? On a show that was long enough and too goddamn long, somebody decided they were going to go with this Johnny Drip Drip crap, so we have some fucking segments featuring Miz and John Morrison melting due to water because it's being sprayed by freaking Xavier Woods cosplaying as fucking Scott Hall. What the hell's going on here? You have Goldberg and Bobby Lashley, probably one of the top four or five longest matches of the night. Just think about that for a second. But the match ends due to an injury stoppage. Just so that way, Bobby Lashley can commit incidental felonial assault, felonious assault <laughs> on a minor in Gage Goldberg. So, so that way you can build up to a return match. This is going to be for Extreme Rules? Or is this what the Saudis want with their fucking blood oil money? And you're going to give them that match? Goldberg Lashley 2 at Crown Jewel in October. Oh boy! So bad. And this pay-per-view, did it need to go over four fucking hours? Just because you can doesn't mean you should.
You could have cut several sh matches off of this show, had this be two and a half to three hours, and it would have been a lot better. Because the longer you went and the more crap you threw in there, the more chances you had to really fuck this up. And god damn. Some of this was just terrible. Now, there were some legitimately decent to good to great things on this show. RK Bro beating AJ and Almost uh, to become the Raw Tag Team Champions. Like, it was a very solid opener. Like, going out there and warming up the crowd, but not trying to tear down the house and steal the fucking show. For whatever reason, fans really liked this RK Bro shit. Whatever. But it was actually solid match, solid moment. Got the crowd into it. That's what an opener to a big pay-per-view should be like. Cool. I was surprised that Dominic didn't turn on his daddy here. But you, could, I guess you could say that for later for SmackDown. Um, but that SmackDown Tag Team Championship match was solid. Oh, it really was. But this Becky Lynch return was fucking... I gotta come back to this. This is unbelievable. Now, the whole thing about did Bianca get buried or not, time will ultimately tell. That, that's the reality. Time will ultimately tell. But it's bad when you got people comparing what happened to Bianca here to what happened to Kofi at the hands of Brock Lesnar. And basically Kofi's becoming a verb. They're saying Bianca got Kofi'd. That's not good. You had so many other options, so many other things you could have done with Becky Lynch here to really make this work, to really have this be a feel-good moment. To really, and let's be clear, you're doing this at SummerSlam for a reason. It is the elephant in the room. We all fucking know it. AEW brought CM Punk in. He debuted Friday night on Rampage. You're doing this shit to respond. And you're trying to get some momentum for yourself. Just having Becky Lynch appear. Well, I mean, it's not really going to give you any sizable, meaningful momentum. You know, people confuse like actual star power versus the star power they allege Becky Lynch to have. But nonetheless, like, it certainly creates a moment in the grand scheme of you're wrestling in front of 50 plus thousand people at Allegiant Stadium. Stadium in Las Vegas, they were going to blow the roof off the joint. And they did. And then you did that. And the optics of this are really, really bad. Whether it is the, she's been gone for a year and she can come in and immediately squash Bianca Belair like that, to the, are we going to do this every time we get a black champion with any type of success? We're just immediately going to squash him? Kofi him, basically? This is not good. Now, some are going to put try to put the spin on it of, you know, hey, you know, you had Bianca get squashed quickly because she wasn't prepared. And the, the, the dynamics of that just don't really work here. That's dumb shit. That's stupid. Sometimes, yes, having that surprise appearance, have it be a squash, could absolutely make sense. See Ultimate Warrior Honky Tonk Man at SummerSlam 88. Major difference of the dynamics there. Honky Tonk was a long-established, long-reigning heel intercontinental champion. Ultimate Warrior was the young, hot, new powerhouse babyface. The dynamics are fucking different here. You're almost at the point now where, unless this is the plan, and maybe it is, although, again, that doesn't really make sense because I don't really see where the fans, by and large, are going to want to boo Becky Lynch like, if you're doing this to have her immediately be the heel, could work. But if you're doing this to then try and have her be the baby face and now baby face Bianca, like, it's stupid. Like, you, you would have been better off, honestly, with Becky Lynch returning, could have given you an opportunity to do something unique and different with Bianca Belair and have her turn down the match. Walk away from Becky Lynch. Have her character flip and turn. So many possibilities here. That was really, really bad. And you, know, you, know, you have to know if you're WWE. Of course, they're not paying attention, so they seem to not know. As you're going to piss off a lot of your black fans by doing this shit. And understandably, justifiably so. And plenty of white fans, too, because they're going to be like, WTF. Like, how do you wait for over a year to be able to bring her back? And then when you finally bring her back... This is the shit that you decided on. You had a dozen plus different ways you could have done this that would have really freaking worked. And you went with this instead. 
And my God, if you want to create any type of goodwill at all, why in the fuck wouldn't you put Becky Lynch on Raw? You want to talk about somebody who's pissed off? How about the USA Network? Are they getting Becky Lynch on SmackDown? On Fox? Does USA Network even frickin' matter to WWE anymore? Good luck with that. It was terrible. I will say this. Seth Rollins versus Edge, I enjoyed the hell out of this. From being able to laugh and mock at Seth Rollins' gear, you know, like, I did plenty of laughing watching SummerSlam. Like, I was overcome by the giggles for an extended period of time, and then it would go away for a minute or two, and then it would come right back again. Because there was a lot of shit on the show that deserved to be giggled at tremendously. I guess there were there was so much train wreck here. There absolutely was. Such a weird, dumb fucking show tonight. God. But Seth Rollins versus Edge was not dumb. Like, as soon as that brood music hit, like this brood Edge... I was badass. The only disappointment is there's no Gangrel. I'm just saying. I'm not saying, but I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Would have been nice to have him do a cameo. Would have been nice to maybe actually have a stage set up and not have a curved ramp, but eh, whatever. Um, but from the entrance to the match itself to the finish, like everything worked with this. This was everything I was hoping that it could be at its very best. It absolutely delivered and at an important time for this show when you realize there were still a couple of fucking matches left and there were so many trade wreck elements and frankly probably had a lot of people already tune out on this crap because they were tired of thinking about you bring Becky back just to sit there and say you're gonna have to drop the strap Bianca and get squashed in doing so it's like Vince McMahon give it and he take it away you want Becky Lynch back you got it but it's gonna cost you bitches, cause that's such good shit. Vince is like the ultimate troll. He really is. He loves trolling his fans. He gets his rocks off at his advanced age. Don't ever get it twisted or confused. It absolutely gets his rocks off. <laughs> um, but God, <laughs> Lashley Goldberg. They got the kid involved, so they're going to have to do another one. Like, whatever the fuck that was, it wasn't. I think about the Pete Weber line. What was that fucking line? Who do you think you are? I am! <laughs> you guys have seen it. Who do you think you are? I am! Pete Weber Jr. <laughs> I think of it like this. is Whatever you thought that was, it wasn't Vince. <laughs> The match was fucking awful. Everything about it was so goddamn bad. <laughs> we should start calling Goldberg Captain Riyadh because goddamn does Saudi Arabia love the Goldberg jet. But anyways, on to the main event of the night. At this point in time, I tweeted out that this... This puts a lot of pressure on the tribal chief to try and save this night because, by God, this is <laughs> but something. And I will say this. I really enjoyed the main event match between John Cena and Roman. There was actually an attempt to tell a story there, which is something you typically wouldn't get out of a Cena match. You actually had Cena getting his ass whooped, actually having to bother to tell a story. Like, it worked. The whole, it only takes one count of three. Like, the whole story made sense. John Cena's not trying to prove that he's the better man. He's not trying to beat Roman's ass. He just desperately wants to pin him. Embarrass him that way. So that way he could be the 17-time world champion. It worked. Everything about this match worked for me. Is it Roman's best work as the head of the table, the tribal chief, as the universal champion? No. But you could, you could feel it, you could sense it, you could believe it. Like, this was a big fight. This had a big fight, big match feel. And we still sporadically get that in professional wrestling today, but not a lot. This had that feeling. You felt like you were watching two big names brawl at the biggest show of the summer, is what it felt like. So that was nice. 
But, you know, after seeing a win goes down, excuse me, and our tribal chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns, perseveres, triumphs as you knew he was going to all along. How dare you have any doubt? How dare you? You're like, okay, now what's next? And man, then the music hits and out comes fucking Brock Lesnar looking like a goddamn onion or whatever the hell he was looking like with that haircut. Looking like he was gassed up or whatever and shit. Looking beastly. Like I just got out of the fucking farms of the Dakotas in Minneapolis throwing bay hail, bales of hay for fucking three months straight. I'm jacked. Yeah, it's all B12. Yeah. He looked like a fucking monster and I know a lot of people are going to say why did they have to send him at Roman we've been there we've done that yes but dynamics are different now Brock's coming back as on his own he's coming back as the challenger Roman Reigns is the guy at the top now Roman Reigns is the one aligned with Paul Heyman the dynamics are vastly different here. Would I have loved to have seen him instead come out and challenge a Bobby Lashley? Yes. If that's the match that we get, let's say, at a WrestleMania, am I good with not getting that here? Yes. If this company intentionally stays away from Brock versus Lashley for stupidity's sake, then they deserve all the criticism that they get. That match needs to happen by WrestleMania. You only have but so many opportunities you're going to be able to use Brock. You only have but so many opportunities where it's going to make sense. You want to get the most out of a Bobby Lashley, you have to have him face and take on Brock at some point. There's so much about that that works. Let that happen. But it still, it was a big thing. I'm really surprised that after the show goes off the air, you're seeing people upload clips of... Lesnar throwing around John Cena, F5 and him, suplexing him and all this shit. It's like, man, that would have been kind of nice to see on the freaking pay-per-view. But, you know, you got to protect the golden boy Cena. You know that's always what they're going to fucking do. But, man, like on a night where you would have said a lot of fans are looking at WWE and say, AEW's got CM Punk now. They got the one up here at the moment based off of the buzz and excitement, engagement level of their, their audience. WWE, what's your answer? This is SummerSlam. This isn't a jabroni show. Like, this is your big four, your big show of the summer, your WrestleMania of the summer. How are you going to respond? If you would have said that they were going to respond by bringing back both Becky Lynch and Brock Lesnar, you would say, okay, you know what? They did something there. They made a response. It's different. It may or may not measure up depending on how you view things, but you could see that they care. You could see that they were conscientious of the fact that they needed to respond with something, and they did respond with something. But whereas I have no real major gripes at the moment with the Brock Lesnar return, the gripes are numerous here with the Becky Lynch return. Instead of ultimately at the end of the day, everybody talking about Becky Lynch being back and how happy they are that Becky Lynch is back and how awesome they are feeling because Becky Lynch is back and they can't wait to see what Becky Lynch is going to do next and how this is going to all work out. Instead, they have her come back, squash the babyface champion, and now everybody's talking about the booking of that bullshit and how Bianca got buried. He giveth, he taketh away. Side note, I'm sorry, but I can't be the only one that when Gable Steveson and the other, uh, I can't remember her name, uh, but the two Olympic gold medal wrestlers got their time, like, anybody else think Vince McMahon's like, Says, when is Chad Gable a black man? I'm just saying. Like, that's the type of night it was. That's the type of shit I was thinking about so much throughout the night. I was trying to understand this from Vince's perspective. But so much of this just made no goddamn sense at all. This show was too goddamn long. There were a lot of train wreck fucking elements. One of the two big returns that you would have been expecting you could hang your hat on to have it be giving everybody goodwill and good feelings for the night. You totally botched and fucked up. And the show ending after midnight doesn't help matters either, damn it. Just because you put it on a Saturday night, which I appreciate, by the way, doesn't give me an excuse to go over. It's not a great show at all. 
You can feel free to lash out in the comments of what you thought about this show. But by God. <laughs> it was a hot mess tonight. Let's just put it that way.